Good job. Okay, good evening. Welcome to the regular meeting of the Beach Haven Borough Council. It is Monday, August 8th at 6 p.m. Please join us for the flag salute led by Dr. Davis. Doesn't sound like it. Right. No. Uh, can I have Drummond Daly, Lawrence, Gary, Murray, Jim mm -hmm. Vogel, and Deb uh, Wittrek come up for the mm -hmm. So, Council, I just want to let you know on um, the evening of July 27th at approximately 7.36, the Beach Haven Police was dispatched to a CPR in progress at Sea Place Condos on Amber Street. Patrolman's Daly, Moritz, Garrity, and Murray all arrived at 7.37, approximately a minute after they were dispatched. Upon arrival, an unknown Good Samaritan was doing compressions on a patient who was later identified as Kenny, the Good Samaritan was. Uh, Patrolman Moritz took over compressions while Patrolman Daly attached the AED. Patrolman Murray and Garrity got the oxygen set up, cleared the area, and cleared the cars for incoming route. The AED analyzed the patient's heart rhythm, administered a shock at 739. After the shock, Patrolman Daly checked for a pulse, finding none. At the AED, AED's prompting, Patrolman Moritz continued chest compressions until the patient regained consciousness approximately one minute later, responding to the officer by squeezing his hand. Mm -hmm. The Beach Haven First Aid Squad arrived at 744 with members EMT Deb Whitcraft, James Vogel, and Bob Yates. The, patients, the patient was loaded onto the stretcher and transported to the Southern Ocean Medical Center where he was assessed and flown to Jersey Shore Medical Center for treatment. At last contact with the patient's family, a heart procedure was done. It was successful and he's re recuperating at Jersey Shore. So I just okay. want to commendate uh, everybody. Yeah. That's all I have. Um, can I say something? They did a great job, and thank you mm. for the first aid squad. Mm. Uh, we also, uh, we did uh, receive letters. First aid squad received uh, a card, and so did the police department, just explaining how thankful the family was. I don't want to disclose the patient's name, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it, it, it's definitely uh, feels good to actually have a save. Uh, before everybody leaves, um, I just want to—I just want to mention. I was going to do this in the closing comments, but usually nobody's here after executive session. Anyhow, about a week and a half ago, uh, I took the chief up on his invitation to do a ride along, and what he termed a quiet Saturday night. The radio never stopped. It was—it was amazing. It was an eye opener. I mean, I knew that you know our, our police department stayed busy. But it really was very interesting. I urge everybody to do it if you haven't done it yet. And I just want to thank our police department because I know what it is even considered a, a quiet night 
you are working continuously. I also would like to take the opportunity, since we have them here, to thank our first aid squad and our fire department. I think we're extremely lucky here in Beach Haven to have the kind of employees, volunteers that we do. It, it really is amazing. So thank you all for your service. Okay, I have a real quick beach badge revenue update. Uh, so far in 2022, the beach badge revenue through July was $453,720. As compared to our beach badge revenue last year at this time uh, was $481,512. So we do just see a slight decrease in revenue as of this point of about $27,000. Cash receipts in the current fund account for the period of July 1st to July 31st were $412,682. Cash disbursements in the current fund account for the month of July totaled $1,311,243.63. The cash balance in the current fund account as of this period totaled $14,952,841. Cash receipts in the water utility account for the period of July 1st to July 31st were $310,232.78. Cash disbursements in the water utility account for the month of July totaled $76,409.70. And the cash balance in the water utility account as of July 31st was $4,882,044.98. I have minutes for approval this evening. I have the June 30th agenda meeting and a July 11th regular meeting without formal reading. Everybody have a chance to review those? Is there a motion to approve? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Ordinance 2012-17-2022-17 bond ordinance authorizing the acquisition of one Trash collection truck by and for the borough of Beach Haven in the county of Ocean, state of New Jersey, appropriating $325,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $309,000 bonds or notes to finance part of the cost thereof. Final reading. Since this is the final reading, it is open for public comment. Would anybody like to make a comment? No? Seeing none. Um, is there a motion to approve 2022-17? Sure. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Paul Miller? Yes. Dr. Davis? Yes. Mrs. Rutherford? Yes. Mayor Lambert? Yes. All matters listed under item consent agenda are considered to be routine by the Municipal Council and will be enacted by one motion in the form listed. Any items requiring expenditure are supported by a certification of availability of funds and any item requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda and discussed separately. All consent agenda items will be reflected in full in the minutes. Resolution 165, returning park bonds. 166, returning dumpster bonds. 173, returning street opening bonds. 180, returning piling bonds. And 182, authorizing an executive session to discuss contract negotiations, redevelopment. Are there any items on here that anybody would like to remove or discuss? No? Uh, seeing none, is there a motion to approve the resolutions within the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Ball Miller? Yes. Dr. Davis? Yes. Mrs. Rutherford? Yes. Mayor Lambert? Yes. I have a bill list this evening in the amount of $1,091,354.31. Any questions about bills? No? Okay, motion to approve. Is there a second? <laughs> Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Bob Miller? Yes. Dr. Davis? Yes. Mrs. Rutherford? Yes. Mayor Lander? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Jamie, did you want to make yeah. a statement? Um, I just want to say a few words about someone recently who passed. It was a really special person here in uh, Beach Haven. Her name was Dolphy Noller. And uh, Dr. Nollard moved to Beach Haven in 1956 from Philadelphia. She wasn't very enthusiastic about the move because she had never lived anywhere else and was close to her family. Nevertheless, her home was where her beloved husband Bill needed to be, and that was joining his family in running 
of Nollard Diner. Beach Haven would be her home for the next 28 years. That wasn't like some people who moved to a new town. She didn't really want to be a mover or shaker. She didn't care to change things or criticize or complain about the thing, about the way things were. Beach Haven was a small, quiet town in the winter and a bustling resort in the summer. It may have seemed a strange place to her at first, but it was where she was going to raise her five children, Bill, Fred, Evelyn, Beth, and Rich. For Dorothy, family would always be her primary focus and her activities reflected that. She joined the Beach Haven School PTA, becoming its president and even getting her children involved in creating Christmas decorations to sell at the annual Crafts Bazaar. She held a come as you are breakfast to, at her home on West Avenue, enlisting several friends to round up unsuspecting PTA moms, some of whom were still in her pajamas and curlers, to share a meal of gales and laughter while talking about what they could do for their children's classrooms. Over the years, she would be a 4-H leader, a brownie leader, and a Cub Scout den mother. Dorothy was a trustee for the Beach Haven Library for 18 years and served as its treasurer. A brass plaque mounted on a paling from the library's old picket fence was presented to her upon her retirement from the board and now hangs actually in my home as a present uh, to my husband. And so in her quiet and creative way, uh, Dorothy added to the life of her adopted home, much as the way her hand embroidered square added to the bicentennial quilt that hangs behind us in Borough Hall. Dorothy May Nollard mm -hmm. lived a good and full life. She passed away on August 3rd, 2022, at the age of, of 99. And it's just things like this and really, I mean, not because she was related to my family, but this really is what this town to me is, is all about. And I'm really proud that my daughter is the fourth generation here and I'm her cousins and I love this community and I really wouldn't want to raise my daughter any, any place else. So thank you for giving me your time. Thank you. I personally knew her. She was my 4-H leader and she was an incredible lady. So our condolences to know our family. Okay, looks like we are to public comment. So please uh, raise your hand. We'll start with the room first. Um, try to hold to three minutes and don't forget to identify yourself. Deb? Deb Whitcraft, mm -hmm. 528 Dock Road. Before we get mm -hmm. called out on the call, mm -hmm. I just wanted to say that. I'm thrilled mm -hmm. that you honored our police department for what they did on that CPR mm -hmm. call. I mean, I've been doing this for almost 30 years and not many calls um, do I react to, but this one, had it not been for what these men did that evening there on Amber Street, this man would not be alive today. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I appreciate the chief acknowledging myself, Bob Yates, Jim Vogel, but, we did mm. nothing compared to what they did. And I just, I, I've never been on a call like that and hope to never be <laughs> mm. like that again, but they did everything right. And mm. the fact that these police officers, not just on that call, but on other mm. calls, we answer over 1,200 calls a year. Mm. And the men and women in our police department, even though they're understaffed, especially this year, they're on the scene before we get there. Mm -hmm. And they have already taken measures to help that person, whether it's oxygen, whether it's CPR, whatever it is. So we get there after they've already been on scene doing what they need to do. So I just hope that everybody recognizes that our police department isn't just about law and order, but they are the first people to show up on calls that sometimes have very bad outcome. And fortunately, mm -hmm. thanks to them, we had a very good outcome mm -hmm. on that one. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, is there anybody else who would like to make public comment tonight? Yes, sir. Um, I to give my support. Oh, just please come up. That's okay. My name is Craig Lynch. I live on Center Street and I wanted to give my support for the holiday snack bar for the outdoor dining. And anybody in Beach Haven has to know there's a critical shortage of dining. The lines are like two hours long, hour and a half long wait to go eat somewhere. And most of the larger restaurants 
really ratcheted up their prices to almost to a point where it's almost impractical for a normal or an average earning income family to take the family out to eat. And the holiday snack bar is one of the only inexpensive places to go for a family to eat. And everybody loves <laughs> dining outdoors. And it's not like a rowdy place. There's not drunks leaving the place. It's just nice. And everybody on Center Street that I know of, most of us eat over at the Holiday Snack Bar because it's, it's affordable. And to try to take away their outdoor dining, I think would be really criminal to the local people. I mean, they're a mom and pop shop. They're just, they're just trying to do good for the community. And I don't know if you guys know this, last week they even had Santa Claus over there doing that. I mean, it's a wonderful family place and it gives it nice character. And if you ever go by there in the morning, see people sitting there eating the affordable breakfast with big smiles on their faces, it's just, I hope you guys vote to keep the outdoor dining there. Thank you. Mayor, can I address that? Because I know there's a lot of questions, and I don't know what the borough's position has ever really been articulated to the benefit of the public there. And also sure. The, the borough is not trying to close holiday snack bar or prevent outdoor dining. Holiday snack bar is an important part of each of the history, but like every other business and resident, it has to follow the rules and procedures, and that's really how we got to where we are. It's a business in a residential zone, and as such, it needs site plan approval whenever it makes changes to its operation. Earlier this year, it applied to the Land Use Board Subcommittee to expand its hours so it could open earlier in the morning. And that application was approved, but there was a condition that there be no outdoor dining during breakfast hours. Holiday Snack Bar seemingly disagreed with that condition, and instead of following the procedure, which would be to apply to the entire Land Use Board for approval, it ignored the condition and served outdoor breakfast dining anyway without any approval for that. Um, also, without Land Use Board approval, it, it increased its outdoor seating in excess of whatever was present before, notwithstanding the last few years of COVID where it was obviously a larger outdoor dining presence. And that is the basis of the lawsuit. It's not about whether outdoor service of any kind, breakfast or any other time of day is a good idea or a bad idea, or whether the borough is opposed to or supports that. It's about following the rules and procedures that have been established. And the Land Use Board Subcommittee determined that breakfast should not be served there. And how a snack bar, like every other business, has to follow the process. And if they don't like that subcommittee determination, they have to go to the entire land use board for review. So in the meantime, without those approvals, it's the borough's obligation to enforce the law and, and what is currently approved. Thank you. Is there anybody else in the room that would like to speak? Yes. I'm Sue Sharkey and um, live at 10 North Delaware. Uh, that's our year round home. And I don't have to stay on any one topic, correct? No. Okay. no. <laughs> so the first thing I want to say is I help run Compassion Cafe. And I just want to say thank you to, to our fans and, and repeat customers. It's a fabulous year. And we know that's um, partially because Beach Haven really as a whole has endorsed it. So that's the first thing I want to say. Um, the, the second thing I want to say, I guess it's relating to this outdoor dining. I don't know. Um, we live right next to Holiday Snack Bar, and actually, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something first. I want to touch on what you said, Jamie. You said this is a great place to raise your kids, that kind of thing. I want to say Beach Haven is is not the best place in the world, but boy, it's pretty darn close. <laughs> and I want to thank our governing bodies. To, land use board, th this board, whatever it is, because you make it the great place that it is. So whether you know you're in favor of the skate park or you're not in favor of the skate park, we need rules. I love recreation, so of course I'm in favor of it. But the problems that the police department is going to have are just coupling onto what's going on down there now. So I like that we have rules. I, I respect that we have rules, and that's what makes this, you know, our happy place. The holiday snack bar, we live right next door. And um, that, that's, you know, you know, when you're buying next to a business, you're next to a business. It's that simple. We feel very blessed that we can live in Beach Haven, you know, whether you're next to a business or not. 
we feel very blessed that it's a seasonal business. We feel very blessed that it's not a late night, like you said, it's not like a junk fest going on. We don't live next to a nightclub. Um, so whatever the governing body decides, I'm not even up to speed on all that stuff, but as a immediate next door neighbor, um, you know, we put up a little curtain. You might say for me to block their restrooms. I say me coming out of my outdoor shower would be bad for their business. So, you know, you can reach, you can reach kind of a happy medium. If depending on what whatever way the outdoor dining or the hours or whatever the number of people goes, I would just sort of put a plug in, sorry, that maybe an awning would keep the noise in rather than scattered umbrellas. That's just a suggestion. I know it would be a bigger expense for you. Oh, thumbs up. Sorry, you know, I, I'm suggesting you spend money. That's just a neighborly kind of thing. And it would be containing, you know, the, the noise and maybe the environment. But we we enjoy living in a place where we can walk to restaurants, we can enjoy it, and we want that to keep happening. So we certainly don't want business owners to kind of say this is too hard to, to run a business. So in any case, thanks for keeping it a great place because it is the best place I know. Thanks. Thank you. Because what you just did is exactly what happens at the land use board. When a business asks for an extension of outdoor seating, it gives everyone around an opportunity either for or against or to give suggestions. And then the land use board determines whether or not that seating as an extension of their site plan is actually going to take place. So we have no say in extensions of site plans. I love the holiday snack bar. I've been going there for 25 years. I started there and I worked at the Marlin. Like it has nothing to do with what we like or not, but what you just did is why we have a land use board. And when you want to increase, you have to go to them and they determine it. So I need to go to another meeting. <laughs> okay. Is there anybody else in the room that would like to speak on any topic? Mr. Halpern? John Halpern, 319 Fairview Avenue, Beach Haven. I'm also president of Beach Haven Taxpayers Association, but I'm going to address council just as a taxpayer. Um, I, can, I'm sorry. Now, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. I'm going to address council as, as a taxpayer tonight. Um, I I wholeheartedly support the holiday snack bar. It's been a gem in this town and an icon in this town for 75 years. Uh, Red Diner Code. There, there's very limited places where we can go to have breakfast. Uh, I've heard some of the complaints was noise related. I have driven down that street in the morning. It, it is a quiet street. I, I can tell you that I hear more noise in my backyard on Fairview Avenue from construction on Essex than I do driving down that, that road. Um, I would also like to say that we need to support our businesses. Our businesses is really the heartthrob of this town. That's what makes Beach Haven unique. Um, that's what, that because of our businesses, our property values are what they are. Without a business district, or without our businesses, there will be a direct impact on this property. Businesses, as you know, it's a short season. They're all struggling. We should do whatever we can to, even if there's issues, to try to resolve them in an annual fashion without going to court, without expending excessive legal fees, which is just an excessive, which is more expense for our taxpayers. You know, we should do whatever we can just to resolve these things together as a community, as opposed to appearing in security. Thank you. Thank you. Just to respond briefly that, that I too also encourage amicable resolutions of things. I, I think litigation is always a last resort. And the borough has proposed a settlement, and the response we've received so far is no, there's no comment. No comment. So. Is there anybody else in the room who would like to speak on any topic?
Hello, Council. Thank mm. you for letting me speak. Uh, my name is Katie Ripson, and I am here to support the holiday. I'm here to support small business, support the community, and support the long term you vision. Your address for the record? Or, excuse me? My, state my address. address. I'm a small business owner in Beach Haven. I own Yoga Bohemia. Okay. So I don't live here, I live in North Beach Haven. I myself am a small business owner here on the island. I own, own Yoga Bohemia, which is a location in this town as well as Long Beach Township and Surf City. It is clear that in the almost decade that I've been operating here on the island, the landscape has changed. No longer we are, are we a community of small beach cottages with a few bedrooms, and instead we are an island of mega homes that sleep sometimes a dozen people comfortably. The island is changing and people want it to change with them and outdoor dining is an important piece of creating a welcoming and fun environment for those who visit and live here. There are more people than businesses, particularly the eateries can support. And in the summer, when you sometimes need to wait upwards of three hours to get a table, outdoor seating helps to alleviate that burden and it is what the people want. I have had the great pleasure to get to know my clients in a deep way. And I can tell you, this is the topic on everyone's mind here. COVID was hard for all of us and small businesses took a massive hit. But one thing COVID gifted us was the outdoor everything. And we like it and we want it. And people want to experience this spectacular environment, this beautiful summer weather, and they want to not spend three hours waiting for an indoor table. I see this as an opportunity for us to answer this call, for us to create a friendly, walkable downtown that is a desirable place for vacation or tourist families to come. Should we shrink from the call to adapt to the change people so want, the future means Beach Haven will no longer be the top tier destination it is today. Yes, our beautiful beaches are the main draw, but the friendly small business owner and all they offer is the heart and soul of what keeps them coming back for more. Supporting our businesses and allowing them to grow and give what the locals and the visitors so want supports the vision of a beautiful future for all the families that have made Beach Haven both their home, their home away from home, and also their favorite vacation destination. So thank you for the time. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Holiday, and thank you all the small business owners here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just, I'm just kind of, I'm confused because I think there's a really a misconception that outdoor dining is not allowed in, in Beach Haven because it is allowed in Beach Haven, but there's a proper procedure that you have to go through in order to get your outdoor seating. In February of 2022, we passed an outdoor seating ordinance and we had lots of comments from, you know, should we allow it in parking lot? Should we allow the big surface tent to come back? We had public meetings about it and we decided that you're allowed to have outdoor seating, but you cannot increase your capacity of your business. If you want to, if you have 60 seats inside and you want to put 30 outside, you have to keep 30 inside. If you want to keep 60 and go to 90, then you have to go to the land use board and that gives everyone around an opportunity to speak. All of the neighbors, positive, negative, but it gives everyone a chance to speak about that increase of seating. That's due process. That's what we have here. We have rules in the books. I love outdoor seating. I know that everyone here supports outdoor seating. We support our businesses. We let for two years, as much seating as we could happen. Parking lots, sidewalks, everywhere. We we tried our best to allow this. So no, so everyone succeeded. But unfortunately, we have to have rules on the books. If you want to increase your outdoor seating, by all means, apply. You're you're more than welcome, and we will work with you as much as we can for the outdoor seating ordinance. But if you're going to increase your capacity, you have to apply for a minor site plan exemption to the land use board. It's seventy five dollars. That's how much it is. So please, we support outdoor seating, 100%. <laughs> and if you're shaking your head now, please come up and tell me why. Could, could we just get your guys' support with the land use No, that's not, that's not due that's process. Not that's process not how it works. works. But mm -hmm. We're not that we get this. We're not, legally, we're, not legally, we're not legally authorized to do that for a land use board application. And also, if you're going to talk, would you come to the fight or something? Because I'm part of your... <laughs> so my name is Margaret Tanya. I'm 112 Northwest Avenue, Polly's Dock. So to, to go before the land use board as a uh, business, it is a $1,500 fee. And, you, and as a commercial business, to go before the land use board, you also have to have a lawyer representing you. Dr. Claude did not have a lawyer representing you. So I don't have to have a lawyer representing you? 
For minor site plan exemption of seventy five dollars and a three hundred fifty dollar escrow fee, that covers the that covers the engineer as well as the land use board. So seventy five dollars covers the engineer. Three hundred fifty dollar escrow fee does. You have to pay for that and notifying your neighbors. You were a very different story. <laughs> but you came to the land use board at least four times to increase your seating. Well, it was a minor site plan exemption. The original reason I was required to come before the land use board was for use of my dock for boats. No, that wasn't the first time. It was in 2020. That's why, because they stopped the project. The I don't want to get in by stuff. But not, I don't, don't want to worry about my stuff. But that was why I was here. But either way, I was always told that you had to have a lawyer representing you if you're a commercial entity and that it was a $1,500 fee, which I've always given. And then you have, I have to pay for each individual, the engineer and the lawyers and everything, everything. So the bill goes higher and higher, the more times you have to come. So I, I was, I was, I'm incorrect then. I thought it was, I keep paying $1,500. I thought it was, I thought that was what the bill was. So apparently I'm wrong. So, so you're you on the, the dock and clock location. That was a very easy, like that was very similar. It, very, it almost similar. identical. Well, the, the only thing with that was I was told I was required if you have a parking space available that it would have to be a handicapped spot. But yet they put seats in their driveway instead of being required to have a handicapped parking. I'm not sure how that was missed at the land use board, but that's here and there. But I, I just was going to talk about the seat. But anyhow, I'm in favor of outdoor dining. I'm glad all you guys are too. <laughs> I'm glad all you guys are too. And I think it's a wonderful thing for Beach Haven. We obviously all struggle to... Uh, do our best these small businesses Absolutely. and we want all our iconic old places that try to stay alive please stay here so and we love mm -hmm. holiday snack part two thank, <laughs> thank you, you. Mm. is there anybody else in the room that would like to speak tonight no yes sir my name is douglas tate I'm at 402 Center Street, right across from Holiday Snack Park. This is so low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can just take it. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the, um, the my, what's in question or, and uh, what I experienced when I first moved here was the, um, uh, at that point in time, was a hostile nature of the borough when I went to do anything to my house at that time. Um, and it had to do with the personnel. And that's why I, I guess I, the, my concern here was, I guess I see, um, of course, they should go before the land use board. But it seems like the hostilities have picked up uh, between on both sides as far as just getting things done. And I guess it's kind of sad to see, I guess, uh, I live right across the street, so I, I see a lot. Uh, I, I sell my front porch. And of course, I'm so glad we're all kind of unanimous with regard to outdoor eating. I just Think it's delightful and also again kudos to the bookers for really raising the elevation of the uh holiday snack bar making it really iconic in the neighborhood and also i think it's raising thing but also um i see the the borough stopping i see the police stopping and serving them papers i guess in the middle of the summer at the height of the season and it just seems like this should be taken off off season and be handled in the 10 months where we are not as busy uh, and I understand we, we have to obey the laws and the laws should be followed. Um, but it seemed like the escalation came up, and this is where I, you know, uh, I, I, you know, if I had to go before a land use board because of the escalation, I would certainly bring lawyers with me, and therefore I'm paying lawyers fees at this point because of the escalation. So, um, you know, I, I would hope that we could kind of turn simmer things down in the summertime and then maybe turn up the heat in the off season and try to figure out how to resolve the problem and the issues. That's the first thing. The second thing I want to commend the police department for, I had a major incident at my house in May and they were just amazing. So um, I'm so glad they were recognized here tonight. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, most of the police have left. Uh, the one who was in charge, he did an amazing job. I got this witness firsthand and the rest. They took the young man away. Uh, and then again, all the name names, but they just did an outstanding professional job. And it really um, was amazing how they followed up and follow through with everything that happened. Um, so again, credit to the police department. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anybody else in the room would like to speak? Yes, sir. Hello, Ryan uh, Singh from 402 Center Street. 
Uh, this is not related to outdoor dining. My biggest question, uh, I'm new to the island and we have a sidewalk issue. Is there any plans in the works or any surveys going on to actually have physical sidewalks so people can stop walking on the streets <laughs> and fixing the curbs? So for example, the emergency squad across the street, there's curves that are 90 degrees. So a child, a mother in a stroller, bicycle riders, they're just fall right over. So I just want to bring that to attention. I know lots of things are grandfathered into the town, mm -hmm. but I know that, you know, the township does have an eminent domain when it comes to safety. And I think this is a, this is an issue also in terms of the kids walking the street and the sandpaper the other day, there was a lady who a couple of weeks ago who hit four people on bikes four times in one week. So uh, that might be an issue. So I, I just want to bring that to the table and maybe the township has something in the works for that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, so if you have yeah. particular locations that are of concern, please contact our code enforcement officer and give them an address so we can go inspect it. Thank you. <laughs> I, Mr. Sam, I'd just like to note too, I mean, we this came up last year in, in a completely separate way. And I have great sidewalks all up and down my block. People just don't want to use them. They prefer to walk in the street. So I don't know what we can do about that, but, you know. And I will also speak to that. We speak about it at the Neighborhood Watch meeting often. Um, and we talk about how we try to give jaywalking tickets. I mean, it's just trying to manage all these people that walk in the middle of the street all the time. Um, it is very frustrating. I have started telling people to walk in the street on the sidewalk. Um, but anyway, yeah, we're doing our best to do that. And there are some areas I know that are, are concerned that we need to address. So keep working mm. on it. Thank you. Mm. Yes. Eileen Boker, Holiday Snack Bar, 401 Center Street, Beach Haven. And all I'm going to do is state facts. There is no site plan for the Holiday Snack Bar. There never has been. It's been there since 1947. And so there's a good chance that a lot of the ordinances, as they were enacted, were never enforced on the restaurant. When I first came to the business last year and I came into the town and we did the outside seating permit for the previous year, I basically copied everything that Glenn Warfield had written for the prior year, which gave 45 seats outside. Prior to COVID, Glenn had been given permission by the town to have four tables with four to six chairs at each table which could give a count of 24 additional seats to the 45 that had, he had inside. He also had a 10 top on the back of the property that had been waited on for decades. The holiday snack bar had served breakfast in 1999 and in 2000. When I went into the borough hall in February to fill out permit work to install a new hood an Ansel system for basically insurance purposes and, and to run a, a cleaner air restaurant. Vive Washburn said to me, oh, we heard a rumor that you're gonna have breakfast this year. And I said, yes, we're a restaurant. The local ordinance limits food service from midnight until 6 a.m. And she said to me, we're gonna have to fill out a change of use. That's a change of use. And I said, I, I don't think so. I'm a restaurant and it's not even a change of hours because we had been arriving at the restaurant for decades between six and seven o'clock in the morning to begin prep and baking and selling cakes. So we had already been operating our business like it had been for close to 75 years. Prior to Memorial Day weekend, Pat O'Donnell very uncomfortably came into the restaurant to let me know that he had been sent because they were coming down, and I have to assume that that was the town, was coming down on anyone and everyone that had seating that was against the ordinances. Now, in another ordinance, it reads, establishments that are serving food are encouraged to place benches and tables and seats on their property to allow customers to eat the food and consume the food that they bought at your premise. It doesn't give a number. It doesn't give an area. Now, inside seating is limited typically by who? It's the teacher in me asking questions. I want the interaction. 
seating inside is limited by the fire marshal. Outside seating is limited by who? No yeah. one, not even the Board of Health. Now during COVID, the Board of Health got involved with outside seating because your tables had to be six feet apart. Now our tables were exact, at the start of the summer, our tables were exactly where they had been since Glenn Warfield had built those picnic tables and put them up against the Herkiner property, which is to the west of ours. Now the town for the years that Glenn had those here never brought up that 10 foot buffer that as immediately when we received our first two summons from the town of Beach Haven, we were then told that the tables needed to be moved 10 feet. We moved them that day under the advice of council. The second summons that I had received was for serving breakfast outside. And when that was written on the corner of the application for a site plan review that I was asked to fill out by Ms. Mason, they dog-eared down at the bottom, no serving breakfast outside. When that happened, I sent an email to John Halperin saying, hey, this seems unusual to me. I drive around the town and there are certainly other restaurants and I will not get into a contest with other businesses. I want everyone to do well. There is enough business on this island that the restaurants in particular struggle. Every single kitchen is maxed out. It is difficult to find help. And yet here we are, one, trying to make our ends meet and we have not increased the seats, not by one from what had pre-existed when we bought the property in 2021. And yet for the last six to eight weeks, I've been trying to fix a plane while it's flying during the season when we are doing nothing more than trying to serve reasonably priced food to the folks that come there. Those are the facts. Somehow, somewhere, someone decided that this became serious enough to file an emergent injunction in superior court because these outside seats and the holiday snack bar serving breakfast was so terrible that we had to go up to Tom's River and get someone to, de de someone to deliver on that. That was denied last week. Superior court even looked at that and said, really, we should be settling this here. And quite honestly, I know we can. And yet at this juncture, it isn't just for me and my little business. It is for all of the other businesses, little or large. There's got to be a more reasonable way than having police officers serve summonses. Pat was put in a pretty uncomfortable situation where we've known him for 20 years. His son works for me. We, we tried to get the police department to take it. No one even really wanted to do this. And yet there was never someone that politely walked into my place of business and said, really, let's look at this. Let's try to decide if these are too many seats. Are they really expanding their business or are they trying to accommodate the folks that are here? And quite honestly, we never expanded. It is less than the number of seats than had previously been there. I am sorry that it came to this, however, I am the kind of person that believes that even when mistakes are made on either side, people get better. And we are certainly prepared to do that. I love the thought of an awning if the Sharkies are still here. We've been going back and forth with that. That certainly helps contain noise, shelters everyone from seeing in or seeing out. I, and we're amicable to working with everyone to be able to accommodate all that everyone needs. Ms. Booker, do you mind if I ask you a question? I did just know what you said. So you, mm. I was under the impression that you, you bought in 2019, but you bought in 2021. Correct. In the middle, in the middle okay. of the pandemic, I bought a restaurant. So, but, so I guess like so Glenn already had all the seatings for his coat. He had all the approvals for when we had COVID. COVID seatings. And he also had approvals for prior to. But and he also I, had tables out there I, I before you needed ever, to ask. Exactly. Remember he had the three black tables in the front. Correct. Four tops and sometimes he pulled like a chair. I'm, I've eaten there, so I understand He that. could have up to eight chairs at a round table. So I guess the problem is the COVID seating is like now <laughs> post-COVID. So 
we were the procedure like i just said i mean you heard me it was that i mean if you we're always looking to change this and laws in the future like solutions but unfortunately well, like what we have on the books is that's what we go by and it's not well there and there was nothing on the books on the holiday imagine my surprise when the gals ran to the back room because they do play this nice game of yeah cb c share just cb c share and they walk around that wall just from being on the landing support a lot of them believe it or not are handy wrong Right. I would believe that. So it's not like a, a formal. Well, and, and prior to Glenn owning it, and I went and talked to Suzanne Whiting, we couldn't find the Busbies, but we knew they had served breakfast. We got some, um, uh, an affidavit from, because that became the thing. Well, the holidays never done breakfast. And I was like, oh no, the holiday did do breakfast for two years. So, you know, again, that became that whole land use change of use or, and then they tried to say breakfast was an expansion of use. And again, I, I've talked with land use board people who have pretty much validated that neither of those things really constitute an expansion. You know, they are ours. We are serving food. I could have done cake and hamburgers for breakfast. And once it goes to the three member committee, then if you have to appeal it, then you have to go to the whole board. And these are just the rules that. Well, and yet, follow. and yet though, the committee, when they, when they wrote that down on the bottom corner, that might've been the issue there. And, and again, in that moment, no one looked at me and said, oh, look, you've got to go to the, you have to go in front of the land use board now to, to rectify this. And, and I watched Doc and Qual go in and do it on their own. And, and yet, look, I, I, I have been to land use board meetings. Right. I, I have a corporation, so I can't just pay $75. I, I have to be represented by someone that knows what they're doing. And, and maybe that might be a better practice for all of us along the board in there. So that we don't get caught into these he said, she said. And, and the biggest hang up has been on the number. Now we only have 25 seats inside because when we put that new fire and ansel system in, we had to remove the seats that were across the back bar by the grill. So, you know, it had been fairly drilled into my mind that we couldn't increase the number. So we have stayed right about, we're floating probably about 60 seats, 30 inside, 30 outside. I had a permit for 36 inside and initially would have gone to or 36 outside and, it, and would have done only 10 inside because quite honestly, in particular at breakfast, people don't want to come inside. You know, they, they want to just sit outside and it's it, I was fairly disappointed and, and you can read all of these pleadings now because they're online. But, you know, the neighbor's certification, which begins with a lie. Um, then goes on to, to actually paint the holiday as if it is a frat house, animal house now. Like they're, you know, rowdy, rambunctious people. And, you know, the, the rowdiest are maybe the infants that cry or the little kids that are able to run around a little bit outside. Um, and, and again, then it became that buffer zone is, is still a, a point of contention because now somewhere in that neighbor's mind, we're not allowed to have anything in that 10 feet of our property and, you know, that becomes a little bit limiting. We don't have much there, a busing station, a bench, a sandbox, and a water table, which the neighbor also complained about. So I, I get it. And we're willing to put up tall trees or high fences, whatever makes for the good neighbor, and we'll do that. But I thought I knew that not everyone had all of the facts. You, you've been handed the facts very strongly on your side, which you should. I, if I were you, I would take the time to read our council's rebuttal to that. And, you know, we are working with um, Kurt Dowell and Katie Shackleton because I felt I, I needed a defense attorney in this, which seemed odd, but reasonable at the time. So again, I apologize in advance mm -hmm. for any of the upsetness that it has caused you, but know that it has been a hundredfold on us as a family and as a business. And even trying to explain to the customers at seven o'clock that, well, I'm sorry, you can't eat breakfast outside. The town just doesn't allow it. And yet there's a good chance they drove by another restaurant that has a line waiting outside to eat. So thank you. Thank you. And completed with other businesses in town that do serve breakfast outside. Holiday snack bar is in a residential district. That's why any change in operation requires site plan approval. A business operating in the business district operates under different rules. And also, we have mm -hmm. tried to discuss this with snack bar. We had a meeting scheduled with two members of the governing body in July, which I believe I may be mistaken upon advice of council. Holiday snack bar did not show up. 
Okay, thank you. All right. Um, okay, I, I, I don't want to keep going for too much longer here. Okay. For that meeting, I received a letter hand delivered at 3.30 in the afternoon on a Friday demanding that I appear in front of Sherry Mason to show just cause as to why my outside dining shouldn't be removed or my mercantile license revoked. I had an oncology appointment at 10 o'clock in the morning on Monday. I called Sherry at 3.45 to let her know that I would not be able to make that meeting. I also knew that Mr. Dowell had court on Monday and more than likely wouldn't be able to make it. Make it. We asked and counsel was also advised we would not be able to be there. I didn't put my nose up at the town. I was trying to work with it. But again, no one was being harmed. This was over serving breakfast outside. I have opened the bills list because I am curious to see who has paid more, me or the town, for fighting this. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we have, anybody else care to speak on any topic at all, this topic, another one? Uh, wait, let's let everybody have a first shot before we start a second time. So, uh, my name is Bill Hudson. I'm in Lori's Island Inn Motel down at the end of the island. The reason I'm here is we do 2,000 customers a year or more at our motel. And the only complaint I'm having all summer is I can't get a reservation at the restaurant. If I can't get a reservation, I have to walk there and wait there two hours to get in. So instead of having a little mess around with a little Eileen Boker's holiday, holiday snack bar, when she had an approval from Sherry for more seats than were out there, this is ridiculous. The only reason this went forward with two police officers and five summonses the next day is she's upset she didn't come to that meeting. She was at an oncologist office and her attorney was at uh, in court somewhere else. So this is absolutely ridiculous to be able to pull up a, per a permit for this year from Sherry Mason for more seats than is out there. And she gets her nose up in the air because she went, didn't come to a meeting and the next day they're served with five tickets. This is absolutely ridiculous, okay? We need more seats in Beach Haven. We need more seats everywhere. I can't take all the people at my motel coming back to me and saying, I can't get a reservation. I can't get in a place for two hours. We need every business in this, in this town and other towns to have more seating because this is going to affect everybody's property values coming down the line. If we don't have tourists coming to Beach Haven, it's going to affect your houses. It's going to affect your housing values. It's one big spiral. The tourists don't come. It's a big spiral taking everybody downhill. We need to find a way to get a lot more seats. And if she has a permit, which she does, with more seats than that issued this year, why are we going to court wasting $10,000 in attorney's fees of this town to go to court overstepping our bounds to try to shut the business down? Is this the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard, trying to shut this business down? It's been for 80 years. And they have, I have a permit. It can be shown to you in a couple minutes for more seats than they have outside, and the tickets are for seating. This is absolutely ridiculous. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I'd like to say something. Um, mm -hmm. I, 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 I wish we could start over. I mean, there's um, I, the thing I don't like is I don't like finger pointing. I, I can't imagine Sherry Mason, who I have great respect for, issuing summons because she was mad because that 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 Eileen didn't um, attend the meeting at a specific time. I mean, maybe there were mistakes here that could be solved. I think we can solve this. I, I am convinced after listening to everybody tonight that if this went to the land use board and you all came and spoke in favor of the holiday snack bar at the land use board that you would get your outdoor seating probably for breakfast as well as lunch. Um, I, I really am convinced of that, but um, there is a procedure and we do have to follow procedures. I, I think all of you know, I'm very, very supportive of business. I'm very strongly supportive of business and I have been for years. Um, I, I know we need business in town. I know it makes Beach Haven unique to have these businesses. It's why people pay the big bucks to live here. I like to go out, I eat out a lot. 
I needed the holiday snack bar. I worked there 60 years ago, probably more than that. And I, it was a wonderful experience. I, I think we need to be able to resolve these issues, but there are procedures and we do have to follow them. So Tucker's was having an issue of that outdoor seating. And oh, let me just say also, I'm probably the strongest person here on the board in favor of outdoor seating. I, I think it's wonderful. I don't think COVID is going away. I think it's still here. I, I mean, everybody I know is getting it now. Maybe they're not dropping dead, but they're getting it. I think we need as much outdoor seating as we can possibly support. So I'm in favor of this, but we do have to work through these procedures. And, and I think there might be a way that we can resolve some of these issues without having to go to court if we could expedite things and get, get a land use board meeting uh, so that, that, uh, that, that Eileen and her family can be heard at the land use board and you all come and support this. To me, this has been an interesting meeting because I've, I've, I've heard a lot of strong opinions about outdoor seating and the need of restaurants, but we need to follow some of the rules. And, and we, Tucker's had to come to get outdoor seating, the Clam Bar, which has a different name now, which I hear is wonderful. They had to come to get outdoor seating. So it, it, it's a procedure and it is confusing because the holiday has been there for 75 years. And, and the ordinance don't address all these issues. And as, as our lawyer said, um, there, there are different rules for residential areas versus um, commercial areas. And I, and I think that you need to take that into consideration. But I'm listening to so many of you that are neighbors and you don't mind the holiday snack bar. So if you get up and you say that, people listen. And so I think this could be resolved relatively easily if we could uh if we could try to get together and uh find a solution that wasn't going to involve a lot of lawyers and court cases and money and so on um and i'm hoping we can we can do that but we do have to we do have procedures and i think that it's very important if everybody could just decide to do it obviously those of us in council have really no say over the land the land use board is land use that's why it's called land use board it's how you use the land that's why you have to go to them not to us to get permission to do this and um so we as a council really don't have much say over the number of seats and all that sort of thing but we do support business and and i i feel very hurt and a lot of and very sad and that many of you haven't come and talked to us individually given us a phone call and say hey I think, you know, I think you need to look at this differently. That would, that would help. I mean, we can't make the rules. But, um, we can make them eventually, but we can't instantly let somebody do what they want to do when everybody else has to follow the rules. But we can hear it and we can work on trying to make some changes. So in the future, maybe uh, try to contact some of us and, and give us your opinions uh, so that we're not just hearing hear, hearsay and that sort of thing. I mean, we need to learn to work together. Thank you. Um, is there anybody else? Hang on. Before anybody gets a second turn, we're going to give everybody their first shot. Um, is there anybody on Zoom who would like to speak? Tara Murray, you can unmute yourself, state your name and address for the record. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Hi, Mayor Lambert and Council. Um, my name is Tara Murray, 215 Marine Street. Um, before I get into my my quick issue, I just want to say uh, we're full supporters of um, the holiday snack bar. I'm I'm sorry that they have their troubles, but I do hope uh, it can be resolved. Um, I'm calling in reference to building in high season during tourism, vacation rentals, vacations for families. We have two houses on Marine Street one immediately next to us, one directly across from us that are being built at the same time, July and August. There has been hammering nine to six on Saturdays during the week, eight to six, smell of lumber, no ocean smell, sawdust on cars. And I find it very intrusive that the town can allow such a thing. I do understand that workers have to make a living, that you have climate to worry about, so they can't build in December. 
but the neighbors next to us had a vacant land for two years. They tore the house down in the middle of high season. Two years later, they're building in the middle of high season. We own the house 30 years plus. It, we've been coming down and owning that since before LBI, you know, was a happy place and a hot spot for everybody else who's coming down and building mega mansions. We have an old house. It's quaint. We have tenants. We use it. And it's very upsetting to me that we have to answer to tenants that get upset that have building nonstop. People are paying a lot of money to rent down there. And it's a long drive just, you know, to be there, but it's our happy place. And it's been a wonderful few years lately, um, having more time to, to spend down there. But the amount of construction that is allowed at the same time just doesn't make sense to me. How, how, how do you tell homeowners, you know, deal with the construction of two houses that are literally next to you and across the street? And then the year before, there is a mega house built also on Marine on the ocean side, you know, the first block and, and houses 20 people all the time. I mean, that the house next to us, you can touch the cutout from the fence, from our property line. You can stick your hand out and touch the cutout where they're putting an elevator. I mean, it, it blows my mind. It's not going to be a happy place for many of us. If this like, I mean, it's going to be too late for us because they're already building. We can't stop it. But for everybody else on the island, I, I'm, I'm just very upset our whole family is upset. We've had tenants that were, you know, not very happy either, you know, with, with that going on. And I, I don't know what the answer is, but I, I really hope you can help address this. Thank you. Is there anybody else on Zoom? Stephen Beninati, can unmute yourself and state your name and address for the record. Uh, hello, thank you. And uh, thank you, Council and Mayor, for allowing me to speak. I'll be respectful of your time. I want to bring up two issues on a macro level. One, to support the holiday snack bar and to support businesses in general. And the other, much more mundane topic of recycling and in, in particular how the recycling laws right now are impacting restaurants, especially ours. So my address is 212 Center Street. My wife and I have been operating the Gables, owned the property for 18 years, started the project 18 years ago to save the building, not to create a restaurant. 18 years ago, there were laws that would have allowed developers to just take up an old building, an historic structure and knock it down. That was the intention of why we bought the property in 2005. I'm gonna ask a question. Again, I'm going to be respectful of everyone's time. Uh, how many of the individuals on the council have operated small businesses? Show of hands. So you obviously recognize that there are enormous constraints, challenges to operate a small business, especially in a seasonal environment like we have on Beach Haven and Long Beach Island. That exacerbates every problem. And as a result, the community would not be a community, would not be a destination for travelers all over the region if it weren't for small businesses that offer all kinds of services, including hospitality. So I would implore the council to look at your, and I certainly want regulation. I want, I have respect for rules and I certainly do not want chaos, but there's a word that no one has used up to this point. It's called business friendly, a term. And within that term business friendly, another 
concept is called a variance. So in honor of the holiday snack bar and in honor of both sides of that issue, which I recently became familiar with, and you know, frankly, I don't know all the details. Perhaps rather than resorting to legal means, as Councilperson Davis said, maybe the the solution going several months back might have been, you know what, maybe we should sit down and speak with Ms. Boker and try to work out a solution. How do we get to yes? How do we save all of the chaos and acrimony and let's make the town a more of a happy town? Business friendly town. So enough about that. A question about recycling. So my understanding is that when the town picks up recycling, they're selling the recycling, both glass, metal, and cardboard. Is that correct? Yes or no? The, mm -hmm. the town does not sell no. the recycling? No. There's the, the recycling portion of the a sanitation pickup is not revenue generating? There is a small revenue sharing agreement with Ocean County. It gets taken to Ocean County. Ocean County All right, let me ask. Let me ask a question another way. Uh, uh, let's let's try to separate doing the right thing from finance. If the town picks up more recycling, more cardboard, more glass, more metal, aside from doing the right thing. There is a financial incentive than just simply sending it out to a dump or a barge. Is that correct? Yes or no? As of today, yes, but there is talk that they will begin to charge us for our recycling in the coming years. Okay, well, like a former president once said, everything is negotiable in life. So the issue here is to attempt to make it easier for individuals, restaurants like ourselves, to provide more recycling rather than having to pay waste management to take it away and ultimately get co-mingled and go to a dump. I think everyone from an emotional perspective might agree that that makes sense. So there was an ordinance, as I understand it, there was an ordinance change last year where suddenly we had to place cardboard within the blue containers, commingling the cardboard with glass and metal. Is that a true assessment? No, you don't have to. We don't have to, but we were, was it a request? You can get a separate dumpster that's cardboard only if you'd like. Okay, we don't have room. We have very limited space at 212 Center Street. So we requested to purchase at our expense additional Mr. blue. Mr. Benedetti, I think we could work this out outside of a public meeting. Okay, fine. I, I think it would be, I'm, I'm bringing it up because there were uh, 30 other small businesses that perhaps are having similar issues. I uh, will respect everyone's time. Uh, I would re make a request to have someone call me personally on my cell phone number that's listed in the uh, Beach Haven uh, directory and uh, we can work it out, thank you. Now, I honestly believe that there will be a solution to the holiday snack bar dilemma and let's try to do it without having to go to court. Save everyone money and, and heartache, thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody else on Zoom who would like to speak? Don't see any other hands up. Okay, I know there are a couple of people who would like to speak. Uh, nope, somebody else wants to speak first. Hello, my name is mm. Brian Boker. I'm Eileen's husband. I don't reside in the borough, but I help share the cost at the holiday. Um, first, my wife and I are retired teachers for 33 years, and we've never had criminal records ever in our lives. So to be painted as somebody who's not a rule follower and just does what they do and they're going rogue. 
is simply not true. The first encounter that I had this year, because last year we operated with 45 seats outside, and then the governor opened up indoor dining, and we have 45 seats inside because we didn't do the Ansel system yet. So we had 90 seats that we completely functioned with not one complaint from the police department, neighbors, anyone last year. This year, we put the Ansel system up. So we took away 15 inside seats. We removed seats. The problem is my first encounter was being threatened with an ordinance or, or a summons for not having a bicycle rack because my neighbor complained that I had bicycles on the sidewalk. I looked that up. There's no ordinance that you have to have a bicycle rack. Then a police officer came and said, our tables had to be 10 feet apart from each other. Look that up. That might have been some COVID stuff, but that's not an ordinance. Teacher, will follow. Then, months later, they came and said, the tables that they approved to be in the buffer zone, in our diagram, were in the buffer zone. They couldn't be there. That night, I moved those tables. As per Pat O'Donnell, your zoning officer, I sent him a picture. He came by the next day. He told me I had to remove the tent top that had been sitting back there forever. I instantly removed that tent top. So as far as following the rules, like breakfast, I read the ordinance. The ordinance says you can't serve food from 12 at night to 6 in the morning. The ordinance also says that if you have an establishment where you serve food, you are encouraged, that's the word, encouraged to provide seats and tables and trash receptacles so they don't take the trash and stuff all over the town. So as far as like amicable solutions, I, I just want to put that to rest. The neighbor never came to me like he said in his documentation to the court <coughs> that he came and tried to resolve this with us amicably. And getting threatened to be at a meeting Monday or uh, email at 3.30 in the afternoon on a Friday certainly isn't a good display of working together. Um, May 30, the Friday before Memorial Day weekend, we've been open since May 1st. The Friday before Memorial Day weekend, 28 days, 29 days later, we get an email at 3.30 in the afternoon on a Friday saying we have to remove all of our outside seating. You people that said you ran small businesses, you know, on a South Jersey school teacher salary, if I have to remove all my outside seating until the August 15th uh, land use board meeting, the holiday snack bar is going to be a condominium because we can't afford it. We could not afford to lose that revenue. Then the other misinformation that we were provided was we were told that we only had 45 maximum seats total. That was it, 45. Inside, outside, however, that's why you got that weird number on the site plan that they approved. That says 36 outside, nine inside. The 36 outside were all in the buffer zone that they approved. I just want to reiterate that again because we have a summons for that. But 45 seats has never been a number. And we're, you can't pay an $860,000 note on 45 seats in 90 days. Do the math. Prior to us taking over, my whole life, when you worked there, when you worked there, there were between 16 and 24 seats, sometimes more plus the 10 top in the back. So the least seating we ever had there, in my knowledge, is 69 seats. That's kind of a strange number. 70 would be a better rounded number. We would be willing to go with 70. But to try to hold us to 45 seats and adamantly try to hold us to 45 seats, that was really not friendly. Because we produced evidence, photographic evidence and testimonial that we've had outdoor seating since 2011. So why did we not apply for outdoor seating? We already have outdoor seating. But we opened on May 1st. We got this letter on May 29th. We sat in the land use board meeting on Zoom, sticking up for, for the dock and claw because we encouraged the outside seating. And we want to make it work as best as we can. We had no idea. No one informed us that this ordinance, this new ordinance was passed, was finalized in April. Nobody commented, to, nobody connect, called us, told us there was an ordinance. Hey, bro, you guys might want to get on this. You have no time. Nothing. We had no idea there was even an ordinance passed. That's why we were still filling out the old COVID seating, outdoor seating paperwork. So I'm all about being amicable, but honest. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else in the room? Mm -hmm. We're done Zoom. Okay. Please, we've we've already heard <clears throat> a lot of people going way over. So please try to keep it 
to three or less because we do have other business to conduct. Thank you. Um, I want to thank Nancy for sticking up for most mm -hmm. businesses. Your name for the record so we know who's talking. No problem. My name is Bill Hudson. I own Lori's Island End mm -hmm. Motel and Beach Haven Inlet Holgate. I want to thank Nancy for sticking up for the businesses. Uh, I do have one thing to say to the attorney or the mm -hmm. gentleman that said about the nonconformity of the use. You missed one point. There is uh, their grandfathered in for all those years. All those years, those picnic tables have been there. All those years, they've been doing breakfast. All those years, they've been on everything. Even back to Nancy's day when she was working there, they're grandfathered in for everything. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, uh, Craig Lynch. I live on Center Street. Um, we we heard the people that own the restaurant that we all want to support and keep say that this is nothing to do with the land use board like they don't have any power for it and that they have a lot of documenting documentation docu what's the word I'm documentation <laughs> yeah uh supporting what they're saying and they're having a problem what i'm asking is mayor would you please meet with them and look over the proof that they have and then be like a intermarried between the land use board and them because if it turns out that they have all this documentary docu documentation. documentation and it's correct it could go into like a black hole unless we have someone like you that could look at it and say hey you know what you guys are right i'm going to go talk to the land use board and also, could you guys, when the, if it turns out we have to go to the land use board, could you make the meeting well known to everybody and have it at a time when we could go to it? Like this is a Monday. I took the day off of work to be here. And I'm sure a lot of other people did too. So if you could do it, you know, like on a Monday would be great or a weekend. But during the during the summer as quick as possible. So well, Mr. Lynch, just for your edification, land use board meetings are set and they are the first Monday of each month. Oh. And they're on our website and anybody within the 200 feet automatically gets something. Um, as far as what I can do, I, I believe our attorney has already covered that. I cannot get into this. This is a land use board issue. I am not supposed to run any kind of interference for this. But they're saying it's not a land use board. So maybe you could look at it and say, hey, you know what? You're right. It's nothing to do with the land use board. As I said before, I'm always happy to sit down and amicably resolve any litigation or something before it reaches to the point of litigation. But just to be clear, that's like the mayor said, she has no authority to intervene with the land use board. But I'd be more than happy to sit down with any party to try to resolve this. Thank you. Anybody else in the room have anything they'd like to say? Okay, seeing none, I'm going to close the floor to public comment. And now we move on to our executive session. Yes, we're going to be going into an executive session to discuss contract negotiations and redevelopment. I anticipate being in the closed session approximately one hour. No formal action will be taken, and when we reconvene for final remarks, no formal action will be taken then either. Okay, thank you. I took my water bottle up, but I think I left it home. No, I didn't. Thank God. <laughs>
And the pickleball. <laughs> I think you got about 40 votes at that. Because not only is one, I think the people that were the prejudice that they didn't say that. They don't have to go to my neighbors. They don't play pickleball. What are they going to vote for? Yeah, they said there was a pickleball. Oh, yeah, the driver pickleball tournament. They have to go to the pickleball tournament. They have to go to the pickleball tournament. They have to go to the pickleball tournament. They have I'm not a resident. I had two floors that were not here. The last election, which was the last year, I would say about two thirds of the year. Was that the appointment of the mayor? No. Even better.
Zoom, we need to get back from this meeting for another hour or two. <laughs> Very funny. Okay, we good to go? All right, and we're up to final remarks by council. Um, Chris, let's start with you tonight. <laughs> folks who came out earlier to talk about uh, the concerns that they have with different things that were on the agenda today. We're actually not on the agenda, but in public comment. Um, we hope that we can continue to work uh, to solve that situation. So, and uh, I appreciate the input from uh, the community that came out. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, yes, thank you for coming out and uh, uh, to talk about issues in the town. And hopefully we can resolve these amiably and um, save everybody some money uh, and uh, have a nice rest of the month of August. Thank you, Jamie. I'll just echo what hmm. and Nancy and said. Thanks, everybody, for making hmm. your voices heard. We hear them. Enjoy the rest of your August. Thank you, Dan. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Um, ditto with everybody else is saying, uh, we appreciate your input. And at that juncture, we'll say meeting adjourned. Thank you. Is there a motion? <laughs> Second? Third?